and there's this overwhelming sense of me struggling when I get challenged. That's been really clear. What if the body is actually a mirror of how we live our lives? Okay, how does this look? This is not me trying to be pretentious. Wait, let me just... Uh... I don't like when I'm filming, I really hate doing the sound separately and having to sync it. But since I'm trying to improve every video, I want to do the audio this time and link it, sync it separately. That is really low. Growing up with Crohn's disease, my parents went out of their way for me to just eat really pretty bland boiled food with like no seasoning. It was a nightmare. So here you go. Kids, to see some film star, some celebrity advertising for something which is ideally not correct. First time I tried deep fried chicken was when I was 26. A little late. Shouldn't eat this too often, obviously. Okay, let's just roll. There's no new batteries to put in. Man, this place is a mess. I wanted to just make a quick video. You know, I've been overthinking about posting, obviously, online since for some people it changes their lives. And I just don't want to overthink it and whatever I put up I've become really kind of self-conscious considering you obviously people judge things online by views and metrics and some things they don't necessarily need to be <laughs> made to try to get attention they're just made in a way as some kind of self therapy or self actualization some videos I put online were for like, one was for a scholarship the scholarship i didn't get but it was good experience posting something and like speaking for myself online but with this video i just want to talk about stuff that i've never really had confidence to speak about but in a way i'm speaking up for myself at a time in my life where there was no one to listen and i, I want to share emotions that i've never uh, that i've kept inside bottled up that I feel if I if I don't really express that in some way that could harm me because I've never actually dealt with it even though I should have already just let it go considering it's been so many years. So the initial stress isn't bad. The continual attachment to the stress is bad. I've closed all the doors so no one can hear anything because I'm like my parents. And God bless, they're amazing people. They've they've done their very best they've worked really hard they've saved they've tried to be like grown up about every decision they've made in life but in some of those decisions i've had absolutely no say over my own self and i'm talking from london which is meant to be the capital of like the most forward thinking like liberal well-off country in the world i'm just gonna go hit several random points and then they're not going to be at all they might be linked they may not be linked there's some things that have been on my mind and that have bothered me and i'm just going to attack them randomly and in a way i'm a little bit you know some people are going to judge me if they actually care to watch this which could be a selection of people anywhere from family hello to friends or acquaintances. I've started seeing a psychologist. This guy, Adam, he's almost trained up to be a psychologist. I take my clients to the first time, the very first, first, first initial time that a stressful event or events cause the ailment at hand. I feel like you need to give, you need to be a prick more <laughs> and more, because if you're nice and you're people pleasing, then you always end up coming last, you know, even if you want good asking the awkward, inappropriate question is extremely helpful and just uh, saying exactly what comes to your mind, even if it's rude. Because actually, that's like, yes, I'm choosing to be a confident person, I suppose, from now on. I feel as also, as a guy, you know, my dad has never talked about emotions and my mom is, uh, they're both quite emotionless. <laughs> Maybe that's what makes good business people. You make business decisions throughout your life which creep into your life and to your kids and if you don't want to spend money you see everything as a purchase 
so you end up not spending anything almost because you're quite black and white about about this if you're just by yourself as a kid and you, you know you there's always new crazes like if you're at high school and everyone's going to uh, abroad for like a language trip and you're the only kid who doesn't go over and over and over again say so, you know so like maybe i should just be going to like uh, a comprehensive working class high school instead say and like high school especially in the boys environment was ex 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 extremely toxic I used to go to Polish school on the Saturday and that's the only opportunity I had to just mess about a bit emotionally you, you become numb think about a time in your life where you weren't living the life you were supposed to be living you're almost taught growing up in school and at home uh, that what you say doesn't matter and uh, whenever you uh, speak up for yourself, you're ignored. And when you speak up, you make trouble for yourself. Like, you just get more problems. I suppose, you know, when you've got someone who's much older than you drumming at you what you should do or think or be, then uh, you, you, you lose this kind of connection with yourself, with your inner certain sense of self. Is it still recording the sound? And then when you lose that connection with your inner like soul in, in, and inner compass, then you uh, make decisions that might appear a bit off looking back at your life. Because then you get if you go off course. And this is really, I, I'm like with my health, you know, I feel for sure a lot of a lot of illnesses are manifested from your emotions. That's where it starts. When cancer is stressed, they are so sensitive that they get stomach aches. If your emotions are not, uh, haven't been looked after, then you can keep making the same maybe mistakes. God, God this is, I don't want to speak about this, but I'm going to anyway. And then when, you, when your emotions are not just ignored, it comes back you know we're not robots like a robot can do so much that a human can do but like it'll have so many things it can it could never compete on with us as emotions and i feel like with my parents it's been always and i've had loads of little like subtle things said by some family members to just be like almost try to be like they say it the most polite way possible my parents may be a cold some ways. Growing up they were really focused. Like one thing I remember when I had my operation when I was 10, my dad came to visit me after a week and I was like being kept over. And my dad he came and at no point was it asked, are you good? Are you any better? How are you feeling? Oh, he bought the property for the property development, landlord, empire, whatever that is. I don't know why they they will rather put money into a mortgage, but like if you if his kid comes and wants to do some kind of after school activity that costs not very much at all, that they that there will never be any money for that. What they kept saying as a kid would be like every kid would get a house, so we want to secure your future by not putting anything into you now, I suppose. Which is, I think, just a really high form of manipulation. They're, I mean, they're very frugal and uh, they're quite like stoic in their way of life. That they don't need a lot to to be happy, I suppose, since they did come from quite a poor background. I shaved my head today just now, literally. You know, when you're brought up in a, a very wealthy city that is London, and you're in, especially in, a, in, a, in an environment where everybody has pretty much anything and more than they need and then you're just like the kid who misses out maybe you know like you just want to have a bit of fun in it you're just trying to be enjoy your life and that um, and when the emo only emotions you get from your caregiver is when you like study even though you're not actually naturally a studying character and that ends up becoming in a way your identity or how you have fun because you end up working hard impressing your people, classmates, um, your parents. 
but all you're seeking is love and some praise and some kind of sense of belonging, even though that might not be you. Or you were creatively thwarted, you felt spiritually connect disconnected. Because your parents never say I love you, even though actually it's really common for a lot of people and a lot of families. But my parents never say I love you, and I really need that. And I, 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 I suppose I'm, I want to speak up for people which might have the same situation. Um, because people just will need to hear that they're actually, they're amazing. Because most people are amazing, even if they're annoying in some ways, they're still amazing, generally in some other aspects. Uh, and it's nice just to, to feel that, you know, that you're important. Because everyone's important, everyone's got family. Just everything in this world is like interlinked. Like another thing that really bothered me, I, I want to tell my psychologist tomorrow because I'm meeting them tomorrow. It's like, I was in sixth form, I was in an extremely prestigious high school, I was going with several Prime Minister's kids to school, and my brother didn't get accepted into the oratory, he was like five years younger, and my mom actually just, at the time when I was really like, quiet and introverted, and almost emotionally numb, I remember my mom just blaming me for my son, <laughs> my son, for her son, my younger brother not getting in, where in actual fact, in year five, my teacher Miss Jones, dude, she liked me. Dude, she actually liked me, you know? And she wrote me an amazing reference. And in some aspects, I can be extremely likable. And my brother in year five, his, his teacher really hated him. In fact, it was, it was kind of sad hearing what the teacher had to say about him. <sighs> And he didn't get into the he didn't get into the oratory, into the London Oratory in Chelsea, which is one of the, the posher areas in London. I'm not from a posh background, my parents are working class, they're quite basic actually with their ideas. They don't like any finer things in life. Uh, they don't appreciate art. Um, where I'm going. And my brother didn't get in. And you didn't have to blame a helpless 15, 16 year old who didn't get accepted in sixth form because he was really sad going to that school because he didn't feel a part of the community because at no time did his parents ever encourage that and actually in these kind of schools they're extremely competitive there's a lot of parents who do know what do know what's going on do know how to play the game and they're pushing their kids really like it's not about intelligence actually you're, the, you're, you're most intelligent when you're happy you're not scared everything's in place all your needs are met food, friends, expression, personal uh, self actualization uh, when you have like a really good strong environment holding like looking after you well, obviously when you're depressed your brain isn't working in quite the same way it's not working to its ultimate capacity you're just in like survival mode have you ever heard the phrase stress kills you know and I really do feel like my mom especially, she's like a manipulative, she's extremely like a narcissistic manipulative, the things that she says, like she will openly just lie to me, like it's almost like she's like trying to re tell me what my life was when I know what it's been. As if, so it's like who's stupid, you or me? Psychologist last week, that she keeps telling, she, telling me she's like, the, she was the best in class. Dude, if you're an intelligent person, just the person with a bit of common sense. You'd never say you're the best in class, I'm the smartest in class. Because the smartest people never say that. They're all usually quite humble. They just get on with what they have to do, they do what they do, but they never blow wind up their ass. My mum, she never finished uni. I'd, I'd make more money if, you know, if, if I was just, um, if I just had someone there who would listen to me, when I was younger, if I ever had a family, I just, I'd, I'd really suggest that families have dinners all together, that they just talk about every day what's gone on, and they're just attentive to small things, because then how you deal with small stuff in life is magnifies in a big way throughout your life. So like, you know, if, if you had a really bad day at school, like with a teacher who's been unfair, when you have no one there who's older, smarter, from experience to tell you how to deal with things that come up in life, 
then dudes, you're just like, your toolkit for life doesn't get built up. And my parents, we never had dinner together. But like, if, if problems come up, we just ended up just shouting about it instead of just talking it out. Like, talking through it, like, intelligently. We just shout at each other, and that was the way that everything was dealt with. That bothered me, like, my parents always clash. And this is like with no bad intention or ill feeling towards my mom, but she just never let me be like myself. You know, it just sounds like so easy as that, right? But I always had to like overcompensate just to fit in. And I've just been really struggling to shake that away. But in the end, it even we don't choose our parents, we don't choose how they raise us, we don't choose you know how poor or rich or whatever we are but if you're not happy and you, you just can't keep blind to yourself you have to do something